Hello and good morning listeners welcome back to Almus Market Mornings your daily dose of global financial updates I'm your host Swaraj Raj Gopal and we have got you covered on everything from currency shifts to pivotal central bank decisions and important speeches plus you'll gain expert analysis on macroeconomic data that's shaping the market narrative right now join us for this episode and navigate the markets with confidence The NFP was in the limelight on Friday even though the jobs created was higher for the month of June the previous numbers were revised down this is the continuous theme of weak labor market data coming out of the US moreover the unemployment rate inched higher to 4.1% from 4% in the previous print of course focus will also be there on the french elections and election related updates uh, continuing to impact the markets burning jk your thought on the US labor sector post the NFP and any specific trends you are observing for the french elections Uh, good morning uh, swaraj uh, yes we have uh, you know had uh, two important events uh, over the weekend uh, one is the economic uh, event of uh, job market data monthly jobs data from us and uh, the second round of uh, elections in uh, uh, france uh, now uh, let's look at the jobs number uh, headline number uh, beat the expectations coming at 2,6000, that's a non-form payroll number. Uh, and that that usually has been happening. But, uh, you know, increasingly, the headline number is getting less and less importance because of two things. One is uh, there are, uh, you know, ongoingly revisions in the previous numbers, uh, you know, and that has been seen as a downward revision in the latest uh, uh, number as well. uh we had uh, the april number and the uh, you know may number both of them revised by over 50000 lower so the average of the last three months is now just 174000 uh, secondly the uh, job new job creation also includes a lot of temporary uh, jobs so um, it's getting less and less weightage as far as analysts uh, analysts are concerned now importantly the unemployment rate rose to 4.1% so we know that it for it hit 4% last month uh, in may uh, that was after two years and now it's inched up again uh, private sector jobs was lower uh, factory jobs were actually negative uh, it was only the government jobs that were higher than last month uh, average hourly earnings the inflation component was lower uh, than uh, last month and the temporary jobs itself plunged by 48900 which is the largest drop in uh, since uh, april 2021 and there is a historical study which says that uh, when the temporary jobs uh, start to come down that is when the unemployment rate shoots up and that's seen in uh, ahead of all the recession uh, in the uh, you know in the us economy also we have uh, uh, unemployment rate now which is a uh, 0.5% above the lowest that was seen uh, you know in the uh, post pandemic and that's also seen as one of the indicators for uh, you know a recession ahead so uh, you know in the lead up to non farm payroll we have already seen the weekly jobless claims higher adp report uh, lower job openings though uh, came higher in may uh, it was still you know on a historical basis it was much much lower Uh, and much lower than the pre-pandemic level as well. So it's a very uh, confirmed uh, situation of job market uh, uh, weakening in the US. Uh, uh, but uh, whether this uh, you know turns into uh, a dovish uh, Fed or not, that is something that we still have to wait and see because we didn't have any immediate reaction from Fed members. Of although it might have been a, a holiday shortened week, uh, so we will get get more clues. Uh, when Powell uh, testifies to the Congress uh, this week on monetary policy as well, he, he will be followed by Janet Yellen, who will be also testifying. And then we have the CPI number this weekend, or uh, rather this Friday. So uh, we will wait for more clues. Yes, job market coming down, or rather weakening, is one of the factors that even Powell has been hinting at, hinting at uh, for you know, uh, uh, you know, for reviewing the monetary policy. and that's a good thing and if you look at the market uh, reaction there has been uh, now uh, 72% chances of a september rate cut up from about 72% before the jobs uh, report and uh, 
you know, uh, after an extensive debate and speculation on the likely timing of uh, cut, uh, I think this uh, week's CPA data will probably the clincher uh, as far as the you know uh, as far as the monetary policy is concerned. If we have another week uh, uh, inflation number, possibly you know the next dot plot or even well ahead of that, Fed may start indicating a rate cut in September. Um, now, the other important event, as you also hinted, was the French election, a second round that was, um, you know, uh, held on Sunday. And uh, what it, uh, it has given uh, two um, differing uh, outcomes. One is the positive outcome that the right wing has not come because that was seen as the worst uh, uh, prospect for uh, uh, French economy as well as for the uh, Europe as a whole. So they have been relegated to third place. Uh, much different from what the uh, poll side indicated earlier last week. Uh, the uh, the negative side is that the left wing parties have won the most seats, uh, pushing you know Macron's uh, party into the uh, second position. Uh, yeah, and this is the worst outcome because no one has got an absolute majority in the 577 seat National Assembly. Now, uh, what uh, the left coming into uh, you know majority or they're not in majority but getting the highest number of seats means that the prime minister will be chosen uh, from their party uh, however a hung parliament means that will be no uh, you know easy passage of any bills and there can be challenges for the fiscal uh, you know prudence uh, a lot of reforms that uh, the pro market reforms that the macron's uh, uh, government had been uh, pushing for will uh, will have to take uh, back seat also so we have a stalemate in france in political terms and that will continue for some time and that's not good for europe and uh, euro as well now what all this means uh, uh, for the markets is that you know stock market will await more evidence of uh, you know how the monetary policy will move uh, of course uh, uh, in, in stock markets have, have never stopped going up so even if we do see a confirmation of two rate cuts from some fed members uh, uh, i i don't think markets are going to see any uh, fresh rally they would rather look at uh, the two two earnings that will be starting uh, this week uh, and uh, how the uh, you know, prospects of uh, uh, the elections in the U.S. Uh, uh, also evolves because, uh, uh, you know, the candidature from Democrats itself is now uh, is a bit doubtful. Meanwhile, after the last debate, uh, the Republicans, uh, or rather Trump has gained a five-point advantage over uh, Biden. And some, some people are uh, talking about... Uh, uh, different candidate for the Democrat Party as well. So uh, if the Republicans do come, everyone knows that, you know, we will have a higher inflation, trade wars, uh, and also, uh, you know, possibly the rates not coming down so much. Uh, so keeping those things in mind, I don't think there's a big bullish factor as far as this employment report is concerned. And also the political uncertainty in Europe also will keep the dollar uh, safe haven in place, uh, weak Chinese yuan and uh, weak, uh, weak Chinese economy along with the yuan, uh, yuan, yeah, Japanese economy, uh, keeping their rates low will also keep the dollar elevated. So not a big fallout from the uh, employment report as far as the dollar is concerned. Market has been you know, discounting two rates for, for so, quite some time. We need very more stronger evidence of uh, deeper uh, recessionary tendency in US for dollar to make a uh, decisive move. Otherwise, uh, the range of 104-107 in the uh, uh, dollar index uh, uh, should continue. And uh, we, we will have to look at more uh, data in the coming days, uh, as also the Powell's uh, testimony. Uh, so, um, yes, we, uh, these were uh, big events, but uh, to make a decisive impact on the uh, dollar, it, it may need some more uh, in triggers as well. As far as the rupee is concerned, um, last week, we saw the rupee trade much closer to 83.50, despite all the talk about the big big inflows, uh, starting with uh, the JP Morgan inclusion in the uh, of bonds in their index. But uh, uh, I think this is going to be spread over uh, next several months. So that, therefore, it's not going to be uh, in one bunch that we are going to get any such flows. And even if it does come, we know that the central bank is there very much. And so long as the dollar index is not breaking out of its range, I don't think dollar rupee also will uh, break easily out of its own range of uh, 8330 and 8360. Thank you.
Thank you, Jake. And uh, of course, uh, for NFP, the headline number, as you mentioned, is getting less and less important as there is ongoing division in the data that has been observed for the previous numbers getting revised lower. Uh, so basically, private sector jobs lower, factory jobs were actually negative. So the only sector somewhat performing is the government uh, jobs. So that's something uh, markets will be tracking. Uh, so the overall theme in the US is, of course, the job market weakness. Uh, but whether or not that will turn Fed dovish is a question uh, that we might get after f further more evidence on the data. Uh, the French right wing has been relegated uh, to the third uh, to the third place, uh, which is something that the, that was not expected. And rather, uh, the left uh, left wing now seems to be leading the play. So overall, situation of a hung parliament continues, and uh, that that the uh, on further results we'll get further idea of how the election situation turns out. For rupee, we trade close to 83.50 despite flows and flows will be spread out. And as long as uh, as long as long the dollar index continues to be in a range, rupee is not expected to break out. That's it from us today. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.